Hello and welcome to Kigali, Rwanda and the 2018 African Regional Conference. I'm joined now by Chris Hamilton, who is the Chief Executive of BankServe Africa. Chris, thank you for joining me today. G'day. Pleasure to be here. Now, there's lots of conversations at this year's ARC around Africa's drive towards a cashless economy and we're increasingly seeing cash moving to devices on the continent. Yep. What does that sort of mean from a payments perspective? Yeah, well, that's absolutely the story uh, of the decade. You know, we, there's no doubt about it that we're all going to mobile solutions and over time, cash will be replaced by mobile. Um, the more complicated issue, though, is exactly how is that going to happen because there's a very wide range of payment solutions that you can put onto a mobile and have work effectively. But like all these things, they've got to have reach. You know, the payment solution's not much use if you can't pay everybody that you want to pay when you want to pay them. So there's a problem of having like too many solutions on the mobile as opposed to f too few, because then we'll be constantly hunting around for the right app to pay for this particular thing, you know. So I think uh, there's great opportunity to add an enormous amount of value to the economies in Africa, but we've got to do it with a bit of design, you know. And that challenge there is getting those different sort of operators or providers to basically to, to interact and to be interoperable. Is that, is that the, the challenge? Yeah, so look, I think the best thinking now, and if you look around the world, um, and you know, this Swift Arc conference that we're at now is like a small version of the global Cybos conference that happens every year. And again, it's a big theme there. I, I think the best thinking now is to think in layers. What you need is very basic plumbing at the bottom of the payment system that connects up every store of value. So if it's a bank account, if it's a wallet, if it's a blockchain, doesn't matter. They all need to connect together in some relatively easy, technological, open way. And then you can build clever services on top of that that get the benefit of that plumbing, that basic plumbing, and can offer a particular payment solution in a particular context. Are we paying a bill here? Are we um, engaging in a supply chain where the goods are moving one way and the and the payments moving another way. There's lots of answers to those sort of problems, and they're all going to vary slightly, but they should all use the same basic plumbing. And with that basic plumbing, do you get uh, what we were discussing earlier, which is that balance between sort of innovation right. and interoperability? Is that is that a that's the key? Because I think I think anyone who tells you now that they know exactly how. Uh, the various payment solutions are going to look in the future, I think they're being unrealistic. We've got a lot of clever fintechs, a lot of clever people coming up with new ways to solve the payments problem. And it's more about tying the payment, the movement of the value, to whatever else is going on. You know, is, is data moving the other direction? Is it actual goods and services? Is it conditional? Are there complex workflows with lots of other people involved? All of those things are going to evolve over, the ti over time, and we don't know what the answer is yet. So what we need to build is something that's very flexible, that actually gets the costs down of that as much as possible, so that ubiquity thing, but also allows that space for innovation and, and sort of market competition on top. Getting that balance right is a challenge, and it might vary quite a lot from country to country based on the level of economic development and other factors, but I think it's a, it's a judgment call that has to be made at some stage. That variance between country to country that you mentioned, I mean, can we start thinking about this in terms of a, a regional application or a regional right. framework for, the, for, for getting this sort of framework or, or payments right? So in many ways, that's, that's actually the most interesting thing for us at Banks of Africa. Um, we, for many years, have been providing the basic plumbing for the South African system with small investments in other countries. Um, there's clearly a need for South Africa to redevelop its payments infrastructure along the same lines as many other developed economies are right now. Uh, but if we're going to do that, maybe there's an opportunity to start to provide some of that basic plumbing for a broader community for across our southern African region. Uh, so I think we will see, and, and we're already seeing that kind of regional development starting to happen in other parts in the West African region and East African region. So uh, I, I'm an optimist here. I think we're going to have a whole lot of different new services, but also some good work to try and gradually tie those together to give them the plumbing that links them together and makes it a seamless experience. So it's sort of a question of time and, and political It'll will. It'll take a while. To, to, yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah. okay. That, no, this stuff is, is very human. It's not really about the technology. So you can't wave a magic wand and solve it with a blockchain. I'm not saying blockchain won't be part of the answer. What I'm saying is it doesn't solve the human problem of getting the wide range of disparate communities to agree on how they want this stuff to work. And getting that agreement is a job where you need the operators like Banks of Africa, you need the payment associations that are sort of organised the banks together, you need the central banks who've got obviously an important sort of economic interest in making all this work. So the, the touchstone for this is we need to 
to collaborate. We need to get together and talk about how we design these things. Well, Chris, thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure. Thank you.